the space race, who is in the lead in this expensive competition. It's a club for the great powers and Elon Musk. What progress has been made since Apollo 17 landed on the moon? And given the problems here on Earth, do we care? And there's always the promise of finding life on Mars. Join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. Over the past 55 years, humanity has moved from this... ...to this. Lift off. Lift off. This is NASA's Europa Clipper spacecraft carried by a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. The craft took off on October 14th from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida and is now hurling through space towards the moon, albeit a different one from Armstrong, Collins and Aldrin. We are going to explore Europa. It's an icy moon of Jupiter, about the size of our moon, with an ocean below it, we believe, that has uh, more water than twice of all of Earth's oceans combined. We're going to explore this moon to assess habitability. Does it have an environment that could actually sustain life presently? Being NASA's biggest yet interplanetary spacecraft, Europa Clipper measures around 30 meters wide, which is larger than a basketball court. The craft boasts sizable arrays that would collect solar energy to power it when it arrives at Europa. And there you go! Estimated time of arrival? 2030. But on its way to Europa, the space probe will swing by the Earth's neighbor Mars for a gravity assist in February 2025. Mars, too, has been considered as a habitable extraterrestrial environment. NASA has been exploring the Red Planet with the use of rovers ever since 1997. The agency's latest Martian wheels is Perseverance, which made a successful landing on the planet in February 2021. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely. Among others, the rover's goals include identifying ancient Martian environments capable of supporting life and testing oxygen production from the Martian atmosphere to prepare for future crewed missions. Multi-billionaire Elon Musk and his private company, SpaceX, are also in the race for the colonization of Mars. That's the continuance of the dream of Apollo that uh, I think um, people are really looking for. Using its Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket, SpaceX intends to establish both ways Earth-Mars connection. Last week, Starship completed its fifth test flight, showcasing an impressive booster recovery by catching the massive Super Heavy first stage on the same launcher tower it had departed from just minutes earlier. The upper stage ship re-entered the atmosphere and executed a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean less than an hour after launch. Except for a hot staging ring discarded by the booster during its return, all parts of the rocket made a controlled descent back to Earth. This marks a key milestone toward developing a fully reusable launch system, which could drastically increase the payload capacity to orbit. The solution is envisioned as a reusable transportation system capable of on-orbit refueling and leveraging Mars's natural water and CO2 resources to refuel on the surface of Mars. Musk anticipates sending crewed missions on Mars between 2028 and 2029. NASA set 2035 as a potential deadline for its mission of bringing humans on a scientific round trip to the Red Planet. Today's guest is Dr. Piotr Witek from the Planetarium at the Copernicus Science Centre here in Warsaw. Welcome to the programme. Hello. Uh, the first question is, uh, we talk about the space race, uh, Cold War relic, space race between uh, USSR and USA. Um, is it right to think of the same space race but with different players, China coming in? And if so, who's winning? Well, a lot has changed uh, since the Cold War and uh, that uh, former space race is uh, already over. Uh, the race was to show who uh, can get uh, and how far and uh, although the Soviet Union was leading in the first years by placing the first satellite, first p person in, uh, in the space, uh, it was uh, completely overshadowed uh, by the great American accomplishment of placing a man on the moon. Yes. And not once, <coughs> but uh, six times uh, there were people walking on the moon. Uh, and uh, Soviets never did something like that. They never sent a human 
uh, to the moon. So they uh, they declared they they lost the race and they com uh, they concentrated on other uh, ventures. So what was the next step in in, the, in this in the exploration? Uh, the next step after the race to the moon uh, was uh, to go to the uh, lower to the low Earth orbit. And the, all the economy that, uh, grown in, uh, that has grown in space uh, since uh, that year, since uh, the 80s, is concentrated uh, on the low Earth orbit. Uh, first, uh, there were uh, small space stations uh, orbiting the Earth. Uh, then uh, came time for the bigger stations like Mir. And uh, from the rivalry between the, the Soviet Union and the USA, uh, rose uh, a cooperation. First on Mir, which was a uh, Soviet station, then uh, there was uh, the, the, that great project of International Space Station that was, was built uh, by, the, uh, by Russia and the United States uh, in cooperation. It was a great symbol of the end of uh, hostilities, uh, the end of uh, Cold uh, War, that uh, endured uh, for a quite long time although not uh, today. Yes, quite. We, the, the, we always start our earthly conflicts or friction. Um, the, you, you mentioned before we came on air about the, the, uh, the majority of the space exploration is from space looking down, at, uh, looking down on the Earth rather than the other way around into, into uh, uh, outer space. Can you just outline how that's working? Uh, we are very interested in uh, what happens here because it has a direct influence on our lives. Uh, space uh, observations uh, are concerned with uh, the climate, uh, with uh, the um, uh, natural disasters such as uh, uh, great uh, fires uh, or floods. Uh, also about the state of the climate, which is uh, rapidly changing uh, in these uh, years, uh, not only in the polar regions, but also uh, with uh, widespread droughts, for example, uh, in, in Africa, that affect uh, many things on the, on the Earth, including uh, giant migrations uh, happening uh, right now. Uh, also, the agriculture is very interested uh, in uh, data from space, uh, the state of, of the land uh, and how it changes uh, through um, uh, weeks and months is, is very important uh, for our crops. Uh, and you, um, you mentioned about the space companies that commercialise the, the, the exploration. I suppose Elon Musk is the, is the prime example, but it seems that the profit motive is a very a uh, driving one for space. Yes, it is. It is very important. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, the, uh, there was a big shift uh, from the beginnings, where uh, the only players in space uh, were giant uh, nations. Right now, uh, there are also companies and uh, a lot of uh, smaller uh, states that we don't often think about uh, are also uh, sending their own satellites uh, into orbit. Uh, to uh, both for military and civilian purposes uh, and also uh, developing their own uh, means to get uh, to the orbit uh, or to uh, to explore because uh, exploration of space is uh, also uh, uh, an interest of uh, many nations and it's not about just about uh, nasa or isa uh, or japanese uh, aerospace agency uh, there are also players like uh, United Arab Emirates uh, who have sent uh, their probe uh, to Mars. So there are players we don't often think about. Um, the uh, turning, uh, looking at taking away from the Earth and looking towards outer space, um, we, we're sending these probes and reconnaissance drones out, out into the out into the void. Um, the big question, I suppose, is why? Why do why do we do that? You know, uh, it may sound uh, um, given the, given the problems we have on Earth, and we understand the the commercialization of uh, and the benefits that space exploration has about regarding observing the Earth. But why send a drone from the United Arab Emirates, Arab Emirates, into into the emptiness? Uh, there are some. Uh, there, there are many reasons, actually. Uh, one can say uh, that uh, we are driven by this uh, romantic interest uh, in uh, in space and what lies beneath, uh, but it's, it is uh, quite too romantic. Uh, right now, the uh, modern space race uh, is uh, not only about the observation, but also about the claiming uh, the land and the resources. 
outside the Earth. Uh, there are lands to be claimed that uh, we uh, can get to and uh, resources that are untapped. Uh, while on Earth, uh, some resources are declining and some are uh, controlled by the nations that can be our rivals. Uh, for example, rare Earth metals uh, are widespread on the Moon. The uh, Moon is uh, quite uh, close to us in terms of space and it is definitely available since uh, people were already there. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, US and, uh, USA and uh, especially China uh, are uh, going to, to the Moon uh, not only to uh, plant another flag but uh, to stay there, to build an economy uh, and also uh, to, to control uh, the one can say to control space, yes. not uh, like in Star Wars, but rather like uh, during the 19th century where maritime powers controlled far remote islands uh, to rule the seas. Um, you mentioned this, uh, this idea of territory and land and this, essentially the human urge to explore and to conquer. Um, taking the example of the moon, just our nearest uh, heavenly body, um, who owns it? No one. Well, precisely. So, the, so do we? Can we foresee a, a, a Star Wars? I suppose, you know, China and uh, China and the United States, uh, like, like for example, they did uh, in the scramble for Africa in the, in the 19th century. You know, one power plants his flag there, mm. another power plants their flag, and there's a conflict. Uh, it's hard to say uh, what will happen in the future, uh, especially now that uh, there are ventures that never have been realized. Uh, no one has claimed land uh, on the moon. Uh, those first landings uh, were not even a reconnaissance. Uh, they were just uh, ventures to, to show that it is possible. Uh, right now, we have uh, no permanent base uh, on the Moon uh, or uh, anywhere outside the low Earth orbit. There are two uh, stations in orbit uh, around Earth, uh, which is uh, partly showing how the space race has changed, uh, because uh, these stations are the International Space Station, also Chinese. The Chinese are outside uh, those, uh, this uh, post-Cold War cooperation, and this post-Cold War cooperation is ending right now with uh, Russia. Uh, going its separate ways uh, from the US and the rest of the civilized countries. And what about the uh, moving, to, uh, moving to Mars now, this, the, the great stuff of science fiction, uh, uh, Martians invading uh, Earth, that kind of thing. Um, what's, what's the state of exploration of Mars? Is it, a, is it have they found water there? Is it, is it habitable? Is it explorable? What's, what's the... Uh, well, uh, it, there are a lot of accomplishments in uh, recent decades uh, and uh, not only the US uh, is uh, there on, uh, on Mars. Uh, there are uh, orbiters around Mars uh, from, uh, as I said already, uh, from the United Arab Emirates, uh, from India, which is also a major space power uh, right now developing in its uh, human space program. Uh, also from the uh, Europe European Space Agency, uh, which is also very interested uh, in exploration, um, maybe not so in uh, claiming any land, uh, but uh, the Chinese sure. rover is uh, already on the planet. Uh, the Chinese has landed uh, on, on Mars as well on the Moon. Uh, but uh, all these uh, things that uh, we know about Mars uh, said, say that uh, while, it, while it is a larger world than the Moon, while it has an atmosphere, uh, it is uh, really not a habitable place for us. But humans are going to eventually going to land on the Moon. Oh, certainly, and also on, the Mo uh, also on Mars. Oh, sorry, on Mars, yes, that's right. Uh, so when, when is the time frame for that? How, how technologically are we close to uh, sending a... Uh, some say, woman? maybe jokingly, that uh, landing on Mars is always 20 years ahead. <laughs> uh, because it is uh, yes. possible to send people right now to Mars. Uh, maybe the only obstacles uh, would be with uh, rockets uh, and uh, which one would be the proper choice for that. Uh, but technologically it is doable. Still, it is very, very dangerous, and uh, these dangers are not uh, such uh, that uh, the giant agency like NASA uh, can undertake now. Uh, 
Uh, so, um, why is that? What, why, is NASA why would NASA be reluctant, National Aeronautic and Space Administration, be reluctant to explore these worlds for a body for which it was set up for? Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it will get there, uh, but uh, going to Mars is a uh, much larger venture than going to the Moon. The Moon is uh, quite close. You can get there with a uh, big enough rocket, such as Saturn V uh, in the 1970s, or SLS uh, today, you can get there in three days. But to get to Mars, you have to fly the largest rocket ever built for six months. And people have to survive this, uh, this journey from, through space uh, without the protection of our uh, magnetic field uh, or atmosphere, obviously. Uh, so there, is, uh, there are many problems uh, with that. There are problems with uh, psychology of uh, closed uh, space. Uh, yes, human nature and yeah. the relationships. That the, this has this is very, very problematic uh, for uh, such a long journey outside of uh, all human race. Uh, also, there is a concern of radiation, uh, especially when the sun is as active as it is uh, nowadays. Uh, it will change in, uh, in five or six years uh, for sure, but the uh, sun can blast a huge amount of radiation. Uh, without uh, previous warning. warning. Uh, so the uh, astronauts on, on the spaceship traveling to, to Mars uh, are vulnerable. Um, a, a final question to Dr. Vitek. Uh, where does Elon Musk, we mentioned Elon Musk about the great profit motive, the, the entrepreneur, the buccaneering entrepreneur with SpaceX. What does he want, do you think? Uh, he said... He's uh, just showing off. He said and he... Uh, constantly repeats that his uh, ultimate goal is to make a human race multiplanetary. Uh, it can be said that this is a noble goal, but uh, how to get there uh, is uh, another question. And uh, also, will he be uh, the one to send people to, to, to Mars? Uh, I doubt it. Still, uh, he has, uh, or rather SpaceX uh, company that he funded, uh, has uh, done uh, really in impressive uh, things uh, in the res recent years, uh, really uh, lowering the price uh, to get to uh, the Earth orbit and also to send uh, stuff uh, into the uh, outer space, uh, to Mars or, or even to Jupiter, like the recent uh, launch of a uh, very imp imp interesting uh, space probe, the Europa Clipper. Uh, but still, uh, it's... Uh, SpaceX's uh, largest uh, rocket, uh, Starship, uh, is uh, far from uh, getting uh, from Earth uh, to, to the Moon or to Mars. Uh, right now, it's, uh, th there are developments with uh, each launch and this, uh, there are huge steps, but still uh, it has not completed a single flight uh, without crew. And uh, crew safety, uh, the personal safety of the astronauts, uh, is a major concern, uh, especially for a space agency that is funded uh, by the government. Yes, of course. Um, we, we explore space because we're human, I suppose, is, is the right and wrong, or all the different facets of human condition, human nature. Uh, Dr. Vitek, thank you very much for coming on to the programme. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Uh, do join us next time for How We Got Here.